Now, are you and your team watching the whole world equally 24 by seven, or do you try to focus on the places that seem to be the hottest? Yeah, so luckily for us at American Airlines, we have an entire department uh, and, a, and another team that does this on the tactical side of the shop. They're called security operations, the SecOps team. It's led by a peer of mine, Shane, and his team is 24 seven, unlike mine, which goes in during mostly business hours. Um, of course, we ramp up if needed. Uh, we're on call 24 seven, 365, but they're the eyes and the ears of the company. We give them our Intel requirements or our information requirements to scan the horizon for. And then if they see something that's hitting that bar that we've asked, then we get a phone call or a message that says, you know, you might want to watch out for X, Y, and Z because you had asked us to take care of this. And then we take it and run from there and decide what should we do next. So do you think it's important for organizations, if they can afford it, to have two separate groups, one that focuses on the strategic, one that focuses on the tactical, and then they just come together and work, but they have fundamentally different disciplines, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's really the skill set of the analyst that's very different, right? So when we first start out in the government or the military or, or, or even any public department, really, when you think about it, whether it's law enforcement or anything else, you're taught to be a watch officer first. You're the scanner. You're looking at the horizon. You're looking out for certain things that the, you've been asked to look out for. These are basically what we call triggers and indicators. Um, once you move up in your career, um, what happens is you start getting more into the sweet spot of that operational space. And then finally, once you've got a little, little bit of subject matter expertise and what we call the benefit of failure, also known as experience, uh, under your belt, then we go and we say, okay, fine, you can now start operating in this strategic environment where you need to really know the nuts and bolts of what does that city look like? How is it different? And to be able to sense the difference between things going you know, higher in risk or decreasing in risk. All right, so your team is watching everything from a strategic standpoint. So you're seeing that there's danger in the world, you're letting the organization know about that. Days go by, then your tactical team, let's say, picks something up. There's something happening now. What do you do? How do you go into action? Can you maybe give some final thoughts on the response, the crisis response that you go through to take that tactical intelligence and do something about it? Sure. So it really comes down to the city itself and what the major threats are, the most common threats that we would most probably, you know, bump up against. So, for example, in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, the capital, we do fly there as an airline. Uh, we have local folks that works for us for, for us in the city. And then, of course, we've got our plane crew, the, the airline crew that comes in along with the pilot and all the others, right? Um, so we've built contingency planning for any sort of what-if scenario. So everything from a kidnapping to, you know, uh, an accident or a health issue, what have you, Um but it's not enough to build these plans. What really happens is you build a one-pager, easy to explain, um, uh, you know, emergency action plan is what we call it. Um, but then you have to communicate that plan to folks. Otherwise, it's just a piece of paper. So, for example, the local team, which we will call the incident management team, the local incident management team, they know their part in a kidnapping. God forbid that happens to, to one of ours. But that's, again, also not enough. Someone back home at headquarters uh, meaning a crisis management team needs to be tied to that local incident management team so they can talk to each other. And they've already gone through um, and drilled and tabletopped uh, and done this so they know if this happens, here's what we're going to do. And then we do a dry run of this to make sure are all the moving parts working, are all the folks that are invited to the table from legal to HR to the decision-making authority um, to the security folks, um, you know, the business continuity folks, the emergency planning and response folks, all of these folks are at the table, right? But now you have to make sure, do the moving parts work? Do, are these people empowered enough to make these decisions for, for their teams? And more importantly, how soon can we bring our team member back home from danger to safety? Mm -hmm. 